another episode of First Down by Coach Tools. Today we have a really exciting guest, Coach Nathan Bolt Slaughter. Thanks for coming on, Coach. I have no problem. Thanks for having me. So, Coach Slaughter, he's the head football coach at Bishop Don High School in Dallas, Texas, and he has some pretty exciting playing experience in the NFL and CFL. So, to kick things off, Coach, can you just share with the audience a little bit about your background? Yeah, so I tell people all the time, man, I'm a West Texas kid. Um, so if you ever heard of Texas Tech, uh, I'm from Lubbock originally. Um, so grew up out there majority of my life, played small D2 ball um, at West Texas a and I you know, was fortunate there to be a four-year starter. Um, got the opportunity to bounce around with a couple NFL teams, you know, signed with an arena team, ended up getting back to the NFL, been in the CFL. So there were some times where I lived out of my suitcase for a while, but, uh, you know, football saved my life. I love the game and, you know, just in and out to get back to the youth. Yeah. So what was that experience playing professionally? What was that like? And, and how has that helped you in your coaching career now? Um, it was great. You know, I was able to be around um, a lot of the top minds in football. You know, I was, I went to the Texans camp when Bill O'Brien was first hired there. So getting a little bit of that uh, Patriots, Patriots offense and um, that was really great being there. Uh, went to Jacksonville when Gus Bradley was the head coach. So um, getting some of that positive culture, you know, some of that Pete Carroll stuff that he was trying to institute there. Um, was with Arizona when Bruce Arians was the coach. I tell people that's probably the, the most complicated offense um, that I had to be a part of. So um, I learned a lot there and his coaching style was really good. Probably the, the coach that I respect the most in the NFL was him. Um, and then even bouncing around in the CFL, you know, with the Stampeders and Montreal Alouettes, you know, two top organizations. Um, so I gleaned a lot from my experiences, you know, how to run things, how to not run things, um, you know, how to build culture, how to, you know, meetings and installs and things like that. So um, I learned a lot from that professional experience and, you know, I carry it with me day to day. Wow. So when did you then get into coaching after your career? So really uh, immediately after, you know, so um, I had got cut um, in the CFL. I went back to my hometown. You know, originally I wanted to open up a, like a performance gym. Um, so I was working on that. Um, I went back to my old high school um, and held a camp um, for the, you know, young men there. And um, at the time, you know, obviously I was trying to build things up. It wasn't exactly where I wanted at the time. Um, I didn't think the market was really there. You know, I met my wife at the time. So I'm like, you know, I really need to uh, get a stable career, get some things going. And, you know, they offered me a job there. And, you know, I jumped in it and I've been in love ever since. Wow. So just looking at, at your guys' schedule, so you're coming off a pretty big win, right? Yeah, we had a really great win um, on Friday. The boys um put a lot of things together so it was an exciting time nice so how long have you been at, at Bishop Don at this point so this is my fourth season um as a head coach at Bishop Don okay so is so how how has the season been compared so far to to your previous seasons there well so I tell people you know I was hired um that COVID year um so that was like a slap in the face you know, we had to cancel a lot of games. We had games where we played in mass. You know, I think we ended up only playing like four or five games that season. Um, didn't really get to meet my team um, until the summer. You know, we only practiced like two weeks and we had to play a game. Um, so compared to that, you know, being on a day-to-day is very good. You know, this year we have a young team. Um, I graduated a lot of seniors last year. So, you know, we're trying to still kind of get things going. Um, but we're starting to kind of be who we are. Um, kind of playing to our identity. So coming off a great win where, you know, we put up 72 points, you know, it's hard to kind of complain at this point. <laughs> and I know from experience too, in the, for the COVID year, especially, because that was actually my senior year of college. And, and we didn't even have any games to play because I was division three and we got canceled. Okay. Right. Um, but, but yeah, definitely, definitely hard to create a culture when you yeah. can't, really be together you know right right for sure for sure definitely that that year uh taught me really a lot about the you know interpersonal um relationships and building the team and making sure everybody's kind of cohesive and knows each other and knows the standards so 
Um, it wasn't great to go through, um, but in the long run, it, it, it really helped me. Um, and I, that's something that I think about, you know, all the time. Yeah. And, and this is actually something that um, one of, cause I'm, I'm from Philadelphia. One of like my, like big, like the guys that I always like follow Jalen Hurts, he always talks about like, there's never winning and losing. It's always you, you win or you learn. And, oh, yeah. and I think, you know, that what you were just saying kind of reminded me of that coming from the COVID times when things were tough and oh, yeah. programs weren't able to be together and cultures weren't able to be established. So if you were there for four years, it, it's really three seasons, right? Like oh, yeah. Three, th oh, three yeah. seasons of culture. Oh, yeah, for sure. Definitely. Like I said, uh, that was interesting times. And, you know, sometimes it's like I, I got, I got a red shirt year for say. Um, but it's been, it's been an amazing experience and, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying every minute of it. Gotcha. So what, what position did you play? Um, so I was a wide receiver, um, and a return, a return guy. Okay. So are you more of an offensive mind? Well, I kind of, um, you know, when I grew up, I played everything, you know, I played offense, defense, you know, actually in the CFL, the last team I played for, I played DB. Um, so I kind of see the game from that mindset, you know, just always being on the field. So naturally, you know, I, I was always better at defense, but I loved having the ball in my hands. Um, so there's times where I guess you could say I'm more offense than defense, but I like to just say I, I'm a football guy. Yeah, no, that's, that's really cool. And, and especially since you have multiple, multiple angles that you've, you've seen it from. Right. So how, how is that? helped shape your coaching philosophies like if since you played both offense and defense professionally um it's helped me a lot you know because um I've also coached both sides of the ball you know there's times where you know I've been a receiver coach um I've been a DB uh, guy I've coached linebackers I've coordinated offense and defense um so I see the game you know from the full round and, and ultimately for me um, as the head coach, you know, now it, it really helps me because at the end of the day, you know, we're trying to win the game. Um, we're not necessarily focused on how many points we score or what we do on defense. Like, what is it going to take for us to win the game? Um, and ultimately, you know, from seeing things from both sides, it's shaped my philosophy as far as, like, I want to be attacking um, in everything that we do. You know, I don't want to sit back on our heels. Um, I want to dictate what's going on. And so ultimately, I think from playing both sides, from coaching all, all around, um, my philosophy has been shaped to like be the aggressor, attack, um, dictate what's going on. Okay. And so, so Bishop Dunn, are you 5 or 6A? So we are uh, TAPS 5A. Okay. Got it. So being, so obviously being like a larger program, how many – how many kids do you have on your team right now? So for us, um, so in private school, we're a little bit smaller um, than kind of like your traditional, you know, so like right now we probably only have about 25 on our team. Uh, we'll play some teams that are obviously a lot bigger than us, um, but that's where we're at right now. Okay. So, so yeah, being like a tight, a tight knit group, um, like, can you talk more about how you've built that culture and like, maybe some more about your own philosophies? Yeah, so for us, um, the biggest thing, you know, when it comes to our culture, like it, it comes down to our three core values. You know, we talk about belief, uh, trust, and sacrifice. You know, the number one thing I tell um, the young man, the coaches is the first thing is you have to believe in you. Um, if you don't believe in you, if you don't believe in what's going on, like nobody else is. Um, so it kind of starts there. The next part is trust. You know, in order to trust, like you have to be able to commit to the process and like whatever it takes. You know, a lot of times, um, you know, something that Nick Saban always talks about, like you don't have a lot of choices. Like the process is the process. Like you have to follow it. Um, and obviously, when we talk about that sacrifice, there has to be some type of investment made. You got to be willing to do things that um, maybe you haven't done to get things that you haven't received in the past. So ultimately, our culture is kind of resolves around that. Um, I'm big as far as, you know, structure and order, you know, a lot of things are kind of built in the weight room. And when I say the weight room, it's not necessarily um, the weight that we're lifting the sets and the reps, but when we're in the weight room, everything is kind of on a cadence, 
you know, we go on our snap count in the, in the, on the weight room. So when the quarter, the quarterbacks, you know, dictating the, the cadence in the, in the weight room. Um, so if we're saying down, you know, everybody's down, hands on a bar set, we're lifting it up, go, um, we're going, you know, one thing that we do in the weight room is everything that we do is based off of time. Um, so I don't necessarily give them, you got to do this many reps because from being a professional athlete, this person may be feeling great today. This person may be not. They may be on different levels of what they need. Um, but if we're going for, you know, 12 seconds, 15 seconds, or however long, depending on, you know, what I'm trying to get across, they have to know that we play through the whistle. So we lift through the whistle. Um, and I'll dictate, you know, the sets and the reps based off of what I want to do, but they know that they're going through the whistle. Um, so that's something that we do, obviously, running from station to station, um, having great energy, encouraging one another and things like that. So we build a lot of it in the weight room. Um, and then, you know, we take that out to the field as well. And having that attacking mindset, we're not walking around anywhere and things like that. So that's been a major component of kind of how we build things. And it, it all comes back to culture and just mindset, like. I think the, the biggest thing that I took away from what you were just saying is that you're going through the whistle. And so many times, guys, obviously, like everybody knows, people people let up early. But I think that's a great way to to instill that in your in your kids, you know, starting the weight room. So I, I really like that. Um, great. So what – is there any other last words that you'd like to share with the audience, Coach, before we – before we hang up here? Well, I just want to thank you for what you're doing for the game, you know, to, um, you know, spreading the wealth, letting, letting guys have an opportunity to use your platform to get things across. And so, um, I mean, the biggest thing that I would say is, you know, for any coach that's out there, um, you know, keep going, keep trusting your moments, your peaks and your valleys, use all those things for your good and, you know, believe, trust and sacrifice in the process. Yes, sir. Well, greatly appreciate your time, coach, and, and best of luck you at St. Pius next week, right? Oh, yeah. All right. Thank coach. you so much. Yes, sir. <laughs>